listening to Reset Race. You now tuned in to Reset Race. Uh, uh. You're listening to Reset Race. You now tuned in to Reset Race. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Put them back on the grill again. We grilling them. Back on the grill again. We grilling them. Up. You're listening to Reset Race. Adults need reparations to make America great. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race. We no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No. You're listening to Reset Race. We focused on our justice claim. We know what is at stake. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race. You'll find out who really done justice and really who fake. On the edge, go back to U.S. Southern plantations. Pennies, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration. Redlining lynchings, we are old from this nation. You're not about justice if you ain't for reparations. IMG, the wise one. Cousin Mother Intellectual. Samantha bringing fire. Anti black, we pressing you. No permanent friends and no permanent enemies. Enemies, the backbone of the country, the way you need our energy. You gonna see? Listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in the Reset Race. Uh, uh. You're listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in the Reset Race. Uh, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, put them back on the grill again. We grilling them, back on the grill again. We grilling them. Uh. You're listening to Reset Race. Adults need reparations to make America make great. America uh, great. You're tuned in to Reset Race. We no longer starving while others eat off our plate. No. You're listening to Reset Race. We focused on our justice claim. We know what is at stake. Uh, you're tuned in to Reset Race. You'll find out who really about justice and really who fake. Uh, 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 uh. It has been a long time coming. All right. So. Just to get, yeah, just to, yeah, I've been wanting to get him for a minute too because he says the most wild, outlandish, lying ass shit. But it's okay because right, right we're gonna wing. get to it. I, mean, it, it I don't is. have a problem with right wing. Listen, so you have a problem with right wing, like you, ha- you know, you left. I don't have a problem with Republicans. I have a problem with liars and assholes. There's not all of them. He's all three. Into that he's a lying asshole Republican. Racist. Don't forget the racist. He is an yeah. anti-black yeah. racist. Oh, we were getting yeah. there. We're gonna get into Okay, sorry, lies. sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. Let's. Right. So, are All we right. ready so, to start the video? So, <laughs> are you gonna, you so, gonna so we go, we're gonna we're gonna pull, we're gonna steal something from them. Friend of the show, Black Women for Freedom, uh, <laughs> from Twitter. She sent us a link to the to this to this uh, article. Uh, this article. This video from uh, from the Rising Crystal Ball. The, the name of the video is, is Crystal Ball. Time to admit affirmative action failed. All right, we're already starting off wrong. Uh, well, they're correct, but. As you see, as you'll see in the video, they're going about this all wrong. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to dive into the video, and then we're going to do as we usually do. We're going to go, we're going to go through it piece by piece, and we're going to drop the arguments that it's going to destroy their arguments, and we'll that's how we get down. Right, oh, go. and Sagar, I made charts for you, baby. Since you don't know how to read charts, I made very simple three. You know, like I think a third grader should be able to catch them because I caught what you said. We gonna get to it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about the grill, oh, you about the grill your ass, boy. You don't even know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, one of the more dramatic results to come out of the election that we haven't really fully had a chance to dig into yet was the clear rejection by California voters of affirmative action. That's a measure in that state which would have ended the 1990s era ban on the practice in hiring in public university admissions, and it lost in a 15-point landslide. In fact, the only places with majority support for that measure were L.A. and in and around San Francisco. Rest of the state, not having it whatsoever. In places like Fresno, for example, a working class city that's roughly half white and half minority, the measure failed by a margin of two to one. (laughs) Keep in mind, too, affirmative action's failure in California came against the backdrop of many other progressive priorities finding widespread support, from a $15 minimum wage hike in Florida to a tax. I don't want to go deep into what she said, but she knows how she said, oh, there's all this progressive stuff. Well, Crystal, sweetheart, boo-boo, baby. Um, if you notice, progressives, most of them are against reparations too. So you people are not progressives. You're anti-Black racists. So basically what she's saying is this shows that people are anti-Black racists and they have issue with it. But we're going to keep going because I want to go a little bit farther in. And I'm actually going to give my opinion on affirmative action when we get a little bit further down. Wait, 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 wait. I got yeah. you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I got wanted you. to ask you though, because you you're from that area. You're from that area, and like, 
Mm-hmm. Aren't the majority of Black people like kind of in like LA and they're, they're the less they're less than five percent. California population of Black people is less. It's five percent, five statewide. So mm-hmm. in LA, we're we're um, we're 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 you know we're a little bit of the population, but LA is mainly Latinos. But they're Mexicans. A lot LA has, has a lot of Mexicans. There are other racial ethnicities here, but the predominant in LA is Mexico, and I would probably say after that maybe Salvadorians. So, okay. but okay, so. When I was with ADOS LA, I had a meeting with, um, what is her name? Oh my God, Holly. Her name is Holly. Oh my God, she just ran for, oh, I'm, damn it, I'm so mad I'm not remember her name because she was actually really good to us. But she was the state, she was a, um, in the state Senate, I think. But basically she was telling us how they wanted to bring back affirmative action, but she said that it doesn't translate for, in Spanish. But they did a bunch of advertising and stuff. But the thing about it is like, People think that affirmative action is going to help Black people, so it turns them off, right? But the gag is the number one beneficiary of affirmative action is white women. So, and then, like, being that the majority of people in L.A. and a lot of people in California are Latino, affirmative action would have helped them more. It would have helped white women and Latinos. Asians were the ones that pushed against it the hardest because they don't like having, you know, they already met. So they always push against anything, any type of gain for black people. Like, I don't understand why y'all hate us so much, but whatever. And I'm not talking about y'all as individuals. I'm talking about your leadership. Holding signs that say stop Harvard's Asian quota. A group of Asian Americans led by Edward Bloom of Students for Fair Admissions took to Copley Square to protest Harvard University's admissions process. Bloom and others are suing the famed institution for discrimination. Harvard systematically raises the bar for Asian Americans and systematically lowers it for whites, African Americans and Hispanics. We allege that Harvard has a quota that limits the number of Asians. Ed Bloom, who is this man and why is he leading a lawsuit on behalf of Asian American students? Harvard's initial brief argues that that Students for Fair Admissions is a shell organization created by Ed Bloom as a vehicle to advance a right-wing political agenda. This agenda is sometimes politely referred to as rolling back the race conscious reforms of the civil rights era. But if we refuse the euphemization, what we arrive at is Ed Bloom and his right wing colleagues want to return us to the status quo ante of Jim Crow. As a point man for the right's long term multi million dollar campaign to achieve this goal, Bloom has filed more than two dozen lawsuits challenging affirmative action and voting rights. His big win was Shelby County v. Holder the 2013 case, Supreme Court case, where the court eviscerated the Voting Rights Act of 1965 by effectively disabling federal preclearance of changes to state election laws. Practices of voter purging and voter suppression have expanded in the wake of this ruling, just as we would expect, with consequences for the 2016 and 2018 elections. After the Supreme Court upheld race-conscious admissions in Fisher v. Texas, a case I'll briefly talk about later, a case that Bloom was the driving force behind, Bloom regrouped and came up with a new plan, finding Asian Americans to use in the fight against affirmative action. He formed Students for Fair Admissions. The two other board members were Abigail Fisher of Fisher v. Texas and her father, Richard Fisher, and he went looking for Asian American plaintiffs. Okay, so they formed uh, this organization, uh, Fisher, Fisher, and Bloom. They formed a website called harvardnotfair.org, and they used photos like this to recruit Asian American students as plaintiffs. So as you can see on this uh, picture, were you denied admission to Harvard? It may be because you're the wrong race. And then at the bottom, tell us your story. Does this mean that the right suddenly loves Asian Americans? (laughs) Does it? It might be more accurate to say the right is willing to do what is necessary to maintain a negrophobic social order even acknowledging that Asians are discriminated against and admitting more Asian students into institutions of higher education. Strikingly, the Student for Fair Admissions complaint argues not only that Asian Americans are a minority, too, but that they are the most discriminated against minority, doubly burdened by white hostility on the one hand and affirmative action programs designed to help black people on the other. Asian Americans, the complaint (coughs) suggests, have displaced blacks as the most disadvantaged group in society. They are, in effect, the new blacks. 
It is often said that Asian Americans are used as pawns by the right in affirmative action mm -hmm. issues. But in fact, as the video clip shows, Asian Americans are standing alongside Ed Bloom, front and center in the fight to dismantle Harvard's affirmative action program. The Asian American Legal Foundation, a Chinese American organization formed to bring the Brian Ho uh, anti-affirmative mm -hmm. action lawsuit against the San Francisco Unified School District in the 90s, along with the P uh, Political Action Committee 8020, filed a complaint with the U.S. Departments of Education and Justice charging Harvard with discrimination against Asian, Asian students. This complaint was meant to work in tandem with the lawsuit against Harvard, and, and the complaint quotes the um, Harvard brief at great length, the uh, Students for Fair Admissions brief at great length. And by filing the complaint with the U.S. Departments of Justice and Education, they've brought the Trump administration into uh, the, this legal and political battle. In addition, as I'll show, the amicus briefs submitted by the Asian American Legal Foundation in recent Supreme Court cases craft an argument about anti-Asian bias that serves as a template for the Students for Fair Admissions lawsuit against Harvard many years later. What we are witnessing is the emergence of a political phenomenon that has just begun to attract scholarly attention, the mobilization of conservative, professional, middle to upper class, first generation <coughs> Chinese Americans via um, Chinese language apps and social media networks into a formidable anti-affirmative action fighting force on a national scale. Although they represent only a small minority of Asian Americans, these activists claim to speak for all of them, and their dramatic <coughs> confrontational rhetoric and modes of organizing have mostly drowned out the voices of the majority of Asian Americans who support affirmative action. With an unapologetic Asians first, actually Chinese first position, they scoff at the coalition building commitments embraced by Asian American activists for the past half century. It is the explosive convergence of this nascent Chinese immigrant nationalism with an older conservative white nationalism that is driving anti-affirmative action policy. Because I can't talk about people as individuals. I'm talking about leadership. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah that's what it is. Did in Washington State as well. So yeah. before, we, before we go on, let's talk about the history of affirmative action, OK? So the history of affirmative action, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, this is part of, this was part of his push uh, during the civil rights movement. Um, this was basically was um, pushing uh, federal organizations to to give black black people uh, descendants of slaves contracts and hire black people in in government, right? That's that's basically what mm -hmm. it was, and it was specifically for black folks, okay, for the, uh, the descendants of slaves here in the United States because we were so far behind because of the his all the history of slavery, black codes, Jim Crow, and of course they piled on more stuff uh, since then. But it's important to know that that that's the basic history of affirmative action. You guys can look that up anytime you get ready. Um, so let's we have to be clear about who it was for. And then uh, y'all can yeah. see that this video is the Lyndon B. Johnson remarks at Howard University. The full video is like forty something minutes, so y'all might want to watch it. But this is the part where he talks because this is during the time when he first did affirmative action. So it was for us. It wasn't for everybody. It wasn't for white women. It wasn't for people of color. Y'all could be mad about that, but this was supposed to be a way to um, start to start to try to level the playing field for black people, not for people of color, because people of color were not slaves red line jim crow like that's not what yeah. you went through nor for white women let's not even get started on touches up. that beginning is freedom and the barriers to that freedom are tumbling down <laughs> freedom is the right to share share fully and equally in American society to vote, to hold a job, to enter a public place, to go to school. It is the right to be treated in every part of our national life as a person equal in dignity and promise to all others. But freedom is not enough. You do not wipe away the scars of centuries by saying now, you are free to go where you want. 
Now do as you desire and choose the leaders you please. You do not take a person who for years has been hobbled by chains and liberate him, bring him up to the starting line of a race, and then say, you are free to compete with all the others, and still justly believe that you have been completely fair. Thus, it is not enough just to open the gates of opportunity. All our citizens must have the ability to walk through those gates. And this is the next and the more profound stage of the battle for civil rights. We seek not just freedom, but opportunity. We seek not just legal equity, but human ability. Not just equality as a right and a theory, but equality as a fact and equality as a result. For the task is to give 20 million Negroes the same chance as every other American to learn and grow work and share in society, to develop their abilities, physical, mental, and spiritual, and to pursue their individual happiness. <laughs> to this end, equal opportunity is essential, but not enough, not enough. Men and women of all races are born with the same range of abilities. But ability is not just the product of birth. Ability is stretched or stunted by the family that you live with and the neighborhoods you live in, by the school you go to and the poverty or the richness of your surroundings. It is the product of a hundred unseen forces playing upon the little infant, the child, and finally the man. <laughs> Arizona to rank choice voting in Alaska, progressive ballot initiatives overall had a pretty good night. Now, some activists have blamed the wording on the particular affirmative action ballot initiative, but as David Leanhart points out over at the Times, affirmative action has actually failed in every single state where it has been tested at the ballot box over the past 30 years. So clearly, even in a state that votes overwhelmingly and routinely for Democratic candidates, a state which went strongly for Bernie Sanders in the primary, affirmative action is... Bernie Sanders was on some anti-black racist shit. Again, anti-black racist, progressives, most a lot anti-black racist. And for those of y'all, if it if if you feel triggered when I say progressives are anti-black racist, then racists, then I need you to come holler at me at me 17 trillion. And if you are not an anti-black racist, Get out here and fight with us for this reparations and I will elevate you and I will tell people like, hey, this person was really disturbed by this. But if you don't understand that certain things that are going on are anti-black racism, you're going to have to get over it. Like a thing is a thing. I don't I don't no matter how I feel, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm I'm sick and tired of motherfuckers acting like just because you're a progressive that that clears you of like any 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 claim of racism or like enabling white supremacy like that's just being a progressive doesn't mean shit to me it's <laughs> like i vote dim you know i vote yeah. Democrat, you know it's, yeah it's, it's, like but it's the same but it's the same shit over and over again it's like yeah. like it's, it's take it or leave a policy you know what i mean it's like okay this like like uh like john said on the first show you know it's just it's, it's not what we need we're telling you what we need you know, Sam, or even when Sam said the last show, she said the customers will tell you, um, the customers will tell you what you need, what they need. What you want, yeah. Customers you know, will tell you what they and want. We're mm -hmm. telling them, but they still 
they're still curating their black folks to to make to to make to make them feel comfortable and make them feel as if they're they're doing a great job of being anti of being uh pro black or pro whatever they want to call themselves but at the end of the day the policy doesn't fit it just simply does not so we'll yeah. go in more into that later john did you have something i'm sorry yeah uh crystal you got crystal Ingram here making making kelly jr <laughs> making <laughs> kelly jr to the left oh my look yo mm. that the, the game is that that she is playing right here man she's really doing like we always talk about the anti-black class reduction this is shit is these motherfuckers is masters at this shit because she's like, yo, affirmative action is polling in states where it's two to one minority, the white minority. You see how she said that shit? Minority. We, we, we can get into that later, though, but as far I as just, like... Like uh, I said, black people are 5% in LA, so minority. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Yep. So basically what she's saying is shit. She's like, and these are the same states that Bernie Sanders won with $15 minimum wage and the Green New Deal, but they wasn't for affirmative action. Because like Mud said, like we just played the LBJ video because it's tied to the American descendants of slavery, us, the, yeah. the dos, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they know they don't want no, and they, even the minority, <laughs> the quote unquote minority group. Sorry, sorry, John, I don't want to cut you. Okay. Don't use right, dos. No, sure. no, no, don't okay. use dos. And let me tell you why. I just finished watching this uh, thing on a sex cult and DOS is what they call the slave, the sex slaves. So if you oh, nah. so you got to say, I'm talking about the American dogs. You know, I'm just, I'm no, going, no, no, oh, no, I'm hell no. no. no, no, no. I'm telling you. Sex you slaves, say, hell no, I know nothing about that shit. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got to, you got to break that one. So either you got to say a yeah. dos. But yeah, oh, you say, got, I, well, no DOS by itself. So I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking about, nah, nah, I'm talking about, Nick, I ain't talking about no damn sex slaves, man. Sex slaves don't get a phone of action. I know, sex, I know. A phone of action is not for sex John, slaves, man. John, John, John. No, I'm fucking with you, sis. I, I, I know, know what you're saying, know. bro. But go ahead. Can you start <laughs> over, though? I'm sorry. I just had to jump in, like, ooh, yeah, don't, because when you said, oh, put that in there. All right, all right, cut it down. You can cut that. You keep it in there. I don't give a fuck. You want me to leave it in there? Yeah, that's what. Whatever. Whatever, okay. you know what I'm saying? Sorry. Don't talk about yeah, the American dogs, you know what I'm saying? I just don't want people thinking that you trafficking white women, oh, okay? Oh, nah, I thought you was about to say, like, no, nah, I thought you first were going to be like, nigga, I don't say dogs because we ain't Jamaicans and shit. I'm like, oh, my bad. But then you like, yo, dogs are sex slaves. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> you like, you like, yo, affirmative action, not for no damn sex slaves, John. I don't, I'm like, oh, my bad. You know what I'm saying? My bad. But basically what I was saying, though, is that the reason why she's basically doing anti-black class reduction fucking games and shit, because what she, what she just did, well, she was like, yo, this is the same states where $15 an hour minimum wage is popular. Medicare for all is popular, but affirmative action not. So basically, don't give those Negroes nothing. Stop talking about Negro problems. Shh, don't do it. Don't do it. Keep them at the bottom. So that's the game that she played. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Right. It's downright toxic. So what should we take from this? How should we think about it? Well, let's start with this. It's an obvious point, but often overlooked. A policy's popularity and its merit are two very distinct things. Not only do I have no problem with parties and politicians advocating for some unpopular positions, but I've actually had a lot of contempt for the ones who just follow the poll numbers and don't stick their neck out on anything as a matter of principle. It's easy to think of morally righteous positions, which were completely unpopular at the time, but proven correct ultimately by history. Bernie, of course, famously was on the unpopular side of a whole lot of issues throughout his career, from war to trade to gay rights, and he was correct. People, but American descendants of slavery reparations is a step too far. That should tell y'all something, people. Listen, if you believe that you and your people should get everything, but you don't believe that Black Americans should get reparations, American de who, American descendants of slavery, people who descend from formerly enslaved folks, if you don't believe we should get reparations, but you think you should get Medicare for all, free college, you know, housing as a human right, and all this stuff, you're an anti-Black racist. Because I want all of those things for you, so why don't you want reparations for me? And let's be clear, all those, the possibility of getting all those things is built on the wealth that we created. Thank right? you. And we, and that, let's not forget that, you know, because like, like we talked about before, this, this, the, the opportunity and land of opportunity is from the opportunity that created by the wealth and, and uh, from our, our intellectual toil and our labor. It is what it is. It and is we, what it is. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, we need to be clear about like why we keep bringing up reparations because it's kind of intertwined. Like, mm -hmm. we need not only, you know, cash and you know capital, but we also need like set asides. We need special treatment, and part of it 
It's like affirmative action. We need it to be specific to African Americans. Like mm -hmm. that's you know, what about, yeah. you know the descendants of slaves, American descendants of slaves. Yeah. You know, we need to you know American descendants of slavery. Sorry, but we need to you know we need to be clear about um you know getting these set asides made specific to us instead of like you know for everyone essentially but you know that's that's the reason why it's unpopular you know that's that's the reason why you know it's anytime you want to help you know us <laughs> you know america turns against it america gets america gets sour to it but the thing is is that you can't question the merit behind why these things need to happen Listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in to Reset Race. Uh, uh, you're listening to Reset Race, you now tuned in to Reset Race. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Put them back on the grill again, we grilling them. Back on the grill again, we grilling them. Uh, you're listening to Reset Race. Adults need reparations to make America great. Uh, you're tuned in the reset race. We no longer starving while others eat off our plates. No, you're listening to reset race. We focused on our justice claim. We know what is at stake. Uh, you tuned in the reset race. You find out we really about justice and really who think. On the edge, go back to U.S. Southern plantations. Pennies, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration. Redlining and lynchings. We are old from this nation. You're not about justice if you ain't for reparations. M.G. the wise one, cousin mother intellect. Smith the bring fire and top black we pressing up no permanent friends and no permanent enemies the backbone of the country the way you need our energy I'm gonna see listening to reset race you now tuned in the reset race uh uh you're listening to reset race you now tuned in the reset race uh put them back on the grill again we grilling them put them back on the grill again we grilling them put them back on the grill again we grilling them back on the grill again we grilling them up uh, you're listening to reset race adults need reparations to make america great uh, you're tuned in the reset race we no longer starving while others eat off our plate no you're listening to reset race we focused on our justice claim we know what is at stake uh, you're tuned in the reset race you find out we really about justice and really who fake uh, until you do right by me, everything you think about is going to crumble. floor but not only did they give the land they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm not only that they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming not only that they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms not only that Today, many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. Now, this is what we are faced with, and this is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we are coming to get our check. 